Hello and welcome to episode two of Two Turfs in a Ute with uh, Tanya and Suzanne. Um, we've had quite a lot happen since our last uh, our last episode, the episode known as episode one. Um, we uh, what do we do? We went to Nelson. Nelson we was went first to up. Nelson. We did a turn up event down in Nelson. Um, back in June, went really well, fabulous day, beautiful weather, respectful anti-woman protesters, it was good, really enjoyed it. It was really good, I think we had around 120 to 150 people, um, lots of, uh, lots of people speaking, some really, really good, good speakers, um, lots of support. Lots of nice people enjoying a sunny Nelson day. It was really, really good. Yeah, it yeah. was it was great. Um, prep too, a lot of support in the preparation. Um, saw stickers all over town. Saw posters all over town. It was um, it was actually a really successful event. I was really pleased with it. Yeah, yeah, and so was I. The police turned up what halfway through. <laughs> yeah, is... yeah, they they weren't really needed though. It was I no, think I think they were probably keeping an eye on things, and it it was it was all pretty pretty easy. There were a handful of um, protesters across the road who uh, stood there holding their signs, but basically just stood there and listened to our speeches, which was just because of the way the, uh, the logistics of it all. They were standing there across the road listening, which was quite cool. It would have been quite good for them to hear what it was we were saying, rather than kind of um, speculating on all of the all of the evil that we spread. Mm. Uh, they got to hear some of it for themselves and probably realised that actually it wasn't evil at all. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully that's what they got out of it. Um, after Nelson, um, Tanya and I went up to... Um, up to We're just we're in the country. We've just been interrupted by a farmer, um, a farmer um, who's about to yell out something. <laughs> it's what you get in the country, but it's all right. It's a turf, a turfy farmer. Yeah, it's turf. fine. Yeah. Good. Um, so we went up to Auckland and we did a different kind of event up there didn't we Tanya? Yeah we we decided that um, people were still a little bit um, it was still fresh in the memory the whole Albert Park thing so we thought maybe we'd do something indoors so um, we hired a venue and um, kept it secret we didn't publicize it at all and um, we just put it out there in the in the main groups um, if anyone was interested in coming so it was a smaller turnout, it wasn't a public thing. So um, we had a quite a good venue. It, it was actually quite... It worked really well. I'd use it, it, really it again yeah. for, a, um, for an advertised um, event. Yeah. Because it would have taken quite a few more people. Definitely. It was good. Yeah, worked really well. And that, yeah. it, it had a different dynamic just because of it being indoors and um, a little more intimate I guess people were uh, more interactive so people would get up on the mic and um, they'd be asked questions from the floor and things like that so um, it, yeah it was an interesting uh, trial doing it that way and I think I think there's scope for more things like that more um, yeah, I mean the thing with our yeah. with our turn up events is that we can we can manage them however we want yeah. and and work on different ways of delivering the same the same sort of thing yeah. uh, for different audiences, different um, different communities. They're going to have you know Nelson was great. It had a particularly good sort of town square setup that was perfect for the sort mm. of thing we were doing. You don't have those sorts of things everywhere, mm. um, so no, it worked really really well. And yeah. we met, um, for me, it was really lovely to meet some of the Auckland women who I've talked to a lot online and haven't actually met in person. So I've really, really enjoyed that. It's really good. Yeah, it was It was great. We had brunch as well the next day. That was nice. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I sort of wondered about um, standing for women doing something on a regular basis, which was a little more intimate like that. Um, 
yeah i think there's room for that so that might be something we'll be looking at later mm. um the next thing we have on our agenda which is something that uh speak up for women and resist gender education are putting together and it's in in lower huts on tuesday the 12th um it's a candidates meeting for hut well it started off as a candidates meeting for hut self hut, hut south electorate to get candidates talking about education or the um rec curriculum in particular and we've got some candidates coming the ones from the major parties um predictably turned us down but we've got people from act and new zealand first and women's rights party and workers now so we will have a few people there talking uh we'll have marg from resist gender education will be talking as well and there'll be questions which will be the the main probably the main part of the event should run for about an hour um it's at uh we, we had some issues with the venue our first venue was was cancelled um due to uh a trans activist targeting the school where we were trying to hold it um and basically getting angry and throwing his little toys around and the school the school cancelled so we, we we've gone for a hut city council venue this time uh they've given us treadwell street hall in nine eye which is a nice it's actually a fairly central location it's got there's plenty of parking around it's easy to get to um, it's a nice nice hall so we'll be there at seven o'clock on tuesday the 12th, 12th of september which is this this coming tuesday treadwell street hall in nine eye sounds good yeah it It'll should be, be interesting good. Yeah. yeah it's a chance for parents um or anyone interested or worried about the relationship and sexuality education um curriculum to come along and talk to to us and to um interested politicians about about the content of that curriculum and what they can do what their rights are that kind of thing so it should be an interesting event mm. yeah um following on from that will be uh september the 20th which will be the let women speak new zealand justice protest um that's um when posey parker comes over from uh the uk there's a hearing um on that day uh to hear whether the charges will be dismissed for the tomato juice thrower I think I mentioned that last time. And um, we've got the protest um, organised or nearly fully organised. We've got um, a great um, turnout of volunteers for marshals. I'm really pleased with that. Um, yeah, really impressed with the amount of people that are prepared to help out. Um, they're getting trained at the moment and we're working um, on strategy and planning around the logistics of the actual event um it's going well it's going really well um we are aware that there are things we don't know um and we're sort of working closely with the police around intel and stuff like that so hopefully we're not blindsided too much we have our suspicions about things we have our expectations about things um and we have our hopes about things and that's pretty much standard i would have thought um, we just really hope that people will understand that this is about letting women speak, literally. It's letting women get up on the mic and talking. It's it's not about any sort of random uh, idea or uh, agenda that anyone may have. We just want people to speak, women to speak. That's it. And it's a success if that happens. I mean, that's... If, if anyone's got any other agenda, it would be great if they rethought their plans for coming, actually. So if you're going to be a dick, don't turn up? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next thing we have after, after Lower Hutt and Auckland is we're going to do a turn up in Hawke's Bay. On yeah. Around, yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's, I it's think going it, to be cool, that one. It's going to be the weekend of the 8th of October. I, um, and we're hoping it will run in a really similar way to Nelson. We've kind of got a feeling about it that it will be similar. And we're looking for a sort of town square type venue. We've got some lovely um, Speak Up for Women people helping on the ground in Hawke's Bay 
with ideas for venues and advertising and all that kind of stuff. So once we've kind of got through, um, or once I've got through the Lower Hut event and Tanya's got through um, Let Women Speak on the 20th, we can start looking at looking at that one properly. Yeah. But it's, it's been pretty busy. Um, yes. Other than that, for Speak Up for Women, it's um, business as usual. We're still, you know, working with the uh, Human Rights Act and pushing the Human Rights Commission to start uh, or to stop the sort of misinformation or the misrepresentation of the Human Rights Act that they still do. Um, working on various things and obviously busy with the with the election trying to encourage people to go along and talk to their candidates at different meetings and things and ask ask questions um we've got lots of people doing that they're getting some good responses some mixed responses um at some meetings they're not able to ask questions that's a, another issue so yeah it's there's a lot there's a lot happening and it's going to yeah. be an interesting six weeks it is yeah it's going to be fun yeah, nothing like keeping busy. Nothing like keeping busy. So um, we'll see you in either a Lower Hut or Auckland, Auckland, yeah, or Hawkes Bay. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See, see ya. ya.